Yo! How you doing? Right. As you can tell from the general disorganization, I am I'm kind of spaced out today. I'm on holiday and uh, my brain knows it. And so everything's just going to pop now. I've just been chilling out. Audio and video is good. Pond Pimp. Just a man on it as usual. Darius, great to see you. That's really nice of you to say, by the way. Uh, I'm stoked too. This is going to be fun. Do you just... How should I say your name? D-J-E-I-S. You know, pronounce that one for me because I... I need to talk to you too. Um, what are we doing today? Oh, I was gonna, I was thinking this week I'd be more coordinated and we'll do some stuff on Skidder. And we'll give it a go. But I'm not more coordinated than I was last week. I've been playing around with these. We've got some controllers. I'm playing the... Uh... Yeah, we'll be... Uh, yes, so PS3 controllers, PS4 controllers. I've been playing with those. And I want to show some of that stuff. Um, I've been working a bunch on the input system. And it is... Cleaned up and should be in Quick Lisp when that happens, which is like any day now. So I think we'll, I think we'll kick off, I think we'll kick off there. Right, so the, the first, I'm trying to think of what's there, because it's actually a fairly simple system. Like you, you have some devices, let's just, um, whoops, let's get on the Jace. Cool. Nice. Right, um, let's pull up our project from the other week. And it should be in the state we left it. Unless I've messed with something. Nope, that's where we were. I'll bite with a few more comments um, in the source. Loading, loading, loading. Cool, right. And in package, oh, that's cool. And we are going to be using a library called Skitter, which I mentioned last week, and I tried to explain and went... Um, Skitter's pretty simple. Um, as, as with all these projects, I've been trying to keep them separate, so it's not just a Keppel thing. So I'm not just building another mini ecosystem that people don't want to use. So Skitter itself um, provides you with controls and input sources, which we'll see in a second. And that's it. It doesn't know where to get the information for those devices from. Um, then you have to have something that's going to feed Skitter information. And then, and then we'll see. So let's go, let's actually just jump to the source for Skitter for a second and look at the basics. So we have a couple of things. Controls, which are basically just like your data types uh, for the system. Hey, young lady. Um, so we have a boolean control, which is going to be true or false, so think buttons. Uh, symbol control, which is some lisp symbol. So we're going to have things sometimes that just throw a state down the pipe. Um, float controls, think triggers on the back of your gamepad. Vec2 controls, again, think, um, think the joystick parts, little hats and stuff. And these are the integer and unsigned integer variants of this. And... We have these other ones here, float decaying, vec2 decaying, i2 decaying. We'll get to what decaying is soon, but let's look at input sources first. So what you see here is a mouse is just something that has a position, which is a vec2 control, um, a move, which is a vec2 decaying, which I say we'll come back to in a second, and a wheel. Wheels can actually be um, two-dimensional in SDL. So I made the default wheel for this mouse two-dimensional. I mean, you only have to worry about one access most of the time, so that's fine. And then buttons, it's just any number of buttons. So there is an array of buttons on this thing. And they're all Boolean controls. And you can see game pads are very simple. They have some number of buttons, some number of 1D controls, and some number of 2D controls. So some number of triggers, joysticks, buttons. That works. Keyboards, just buttons. And Window Manager has some events and stuff like this, so it has its own input source as well. Um... And when you've defined these, let's bring up the REPL. Now, what's going to be the best way to do this? Let's bring the REPL down here. Let's get into Skidder. Oops. Oh, I haven't actually loaded it yet. Fine. We'll do that. And then we can say mouse, and you can just query it like a struct. So. The mouse position, for example, you queried, and you've got to give it a mouse. And um, 
For now, I just have something down here called a function called mouse that will let you give it an index and it will give you which mouse that's connected. And there's only going to be one, so it's going to be mouse zero most of the time. Um, if your machine supports more than one mouse, then if SDL can handle it or whatever, it'll work fine. And so this is how you query. If you say this, this might fail right now. Oh no, there we go, zero, zero. Um, and same goes for game pads and stuff like this. So that's the basics. We've got controls and we've got sources. The decaying thing you see I use on move and that's because when you move a mouse and then you stop, it's now no longer moving. So the move has to become zero. But because it's not moving, there's no event coming from the system to tell it to go to zero, you know, to, ch uh, to change state. So what we have is the idea of a decaying control and you call a function called decay events at the end of your frame and that just sets any one of these, anything with decays that is true, they just get returned to their default state. So single float will turn back to zero and vec2 will turn back to zero, zero, you know, etc. Same old story. So this is all fun and abstract, but we need to actually use this in our projects. And I think we're just going to noodle around with what we had last week and see what we can do. And we'll get the gamepad putting some input and then we'll we'll have something controllable. And I think we'll just, maybe we can make it bullet shoot up or something. I don't know. We'll work that out in a second. What else was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, gamepads. We will go into detail on that. Oh, packages. Yeah, because all this is, um, what about uh, gyroscopic gear from the Pom de Pom? I don't know. Tell me how, like, if uh, if SDL supports it, we can support it. That's what the nice thing is, defining these new imports, input sources is super easy. I, I made a um, tablet app the other day, so you could have a big touchpad, um, and it just sent float fours down to, all right, but via TCP down to your desktop, and I exposed the tablet as its own control that just had some number of vector four controls on it. Um, what gamepads are you using? As Pom de Pimp says, PS3 and 4. Because just because they work with Linux straight away, uh, PS4 I'm using via Bluetooth. The PS3 I've only tried via cable so far. And it's working. It's a little jittery. PS3 is way jitterier input um, than the other one, than the PS4. So that's kind of weird. Probably have to do some smoothing on that. Anyway, yes, packages. Um, okay, let's. Let's talk packages. Because this is all split up, we have... Oh, I've actually changed the mapping for the doodling now, so hopefully I won't hit pause and pause the stream this time. Right, so we have Skitter over here. It only has those controls and input sources, and it doesn't know where to get data from. So then you have to have something, like we have a host in Keppel, you're gonna have to have some extra thing. Um, so I've got... Uh, skitter dot sdl2 surprise surprise and skitter dot glop right now are the two I support and that will let you if I go and can I just jump over and no oh, can't do that one at the same time let's go to code lisps skitter and sdl2 my keyboard is all over the place right now. Sorry for the rattly noises. Um, in here, there is this function on event. And the idea is that you would call this passing in the events from um, SDL, and then it's going to dispatch them into, um, into Skidder's system. So you can see here, when we get an SDL to mouse motion event, we're going to set the mouse position on whichever mouse it is and just feed in this data so we've got something that's going to turn sdl time into lisp time and yeah and pass these values in so this is the mapping the bootstrapping layer between sdl2 and uh, skidder it's a lot messier but it works you don't have to use that particular one so if you don't you don't have to use the mouse that's in skidder all of those controls you could redefine yourself you could define your own bootstrapping for sdl2 and all that kind of thing but that's really boring, so you probably just want to use mine. Um, I do, and it's, it's working so far. And then we've got, so we've got these, which are the bootstrapping, but again, when we're in Keppel, we just type step host and expect everything to work. And so of course there is one more layer, which is, uh, you've got to hit the right button first. We've got skitter, oh no, wait. 
They all start with Keppel. Keppel dot skitter dot SDL2. And same dot same dot glop. So you can just load one of these depending on what uh, host you're using and then include the package and everything just works then. It just hooks all itself up so you don't have to think about it. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. I just wanted to br bring this up because I don't... I like the idea of, as a community, us building libraries that can interoperate and then providing extra layers of abstraction, you know, for our own projects as we can. Right, so let's shift this out of the way and get into making something because that's more fun. And yeah, my brain is in such holiday mode right now. Feel free to ask questions about anything at all from any of the videos because it's one of those days we can just jump around and do stuff. So let's go into the project definition and we are going to include one of the things we just mentioned, keppel.skidder.sdl2. Um, as we've already, we're already loaded project um, that's just we've loaded um play with verts already so I'm just gonna load this by hand and then back in here we'll go to our package and get rid of that horrible new line and we are going to include keppel.skitter and this has just got all the symbols that I think make sense um, for dealing with for dealing with skitter so that should be done. Oh, no, let's save that. And then let's go back into da, 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 play with verts.lisp. And we need to get our REPL up. Can everyone see the text okay? That should be the same scale. Basically, I'm I'm not quite comfortable with my settings again yet. Um, because I moved from Debian back to Ubuntu as the base. I'm still using Stump Window Manager, so it doesn't look any different. But um, things are certainly different, and I'm still getting used to it. Young Leno, what do you uh, what do you code for a living? <laughs> Just read the FAQ. Yeah, no, it's fine. I work at a uh, Fuse. We make tools to make app development not suck. Or we definitely think it doesn't suck when we're using that stuff, um, which is kind of hard because a lot of app development is super painful. Um, but yeah, we build tools that hopefully make the um, developing and designing experience collaborate a bit better. And it's pretty fucking cool. We've got some, we've got some nice stuff. But I won't uh, waffle about that because my brain is just so out of work. Pwned pimp, text is okay. If me at least, nice, then we're okay. Uh, let's get back to the package we want to be in, which is play with it. And let's start it up and see where we were. There we go. Oh yeah, we had our spheres from last time and the light going around and a little bit of specular on them. And the first thing I think I want to do is get some kind of mouse control um, on the camera because moving those cameras around by hand sucked. So let's do this. Um, so we are going to need a function for updating the camera. It's going to take a camera object. And we're going to set the position and we're going to set the rotation. Now, if we're updating the position, it's probably about time we took into the account the different frame rates. So let's just find out what our frame rate is. I'm going to do a really simple frame rate thing here. So let's just have a counter for the current FPS, um, a counter for that we're actually incrementing up as we go. So work in progress. And then I'm just going to make an, a, a function called a stepper. This is from another library I haven't talked about much. This is a, I have a function for, uh, sorry, a library for dealing with some time stuff. It's kind of mental, it was a little experiment, but the steppers are simple. So, oh, actually, I'll need to load those, I expect, one second. Play with verts, ASD. Temporal functions, there we go. Oops. QL quick load. Temporal functions. I'm surprised that worked with two colons, but sure. Um, into the package, and so we can use it. Nice. So now we can have a. Is it stepper or make stepper? Oh, make stepper. 
and the step size is in seconds and it's one second and then all we do down here is we say every frame we're going to increment every yeah every every frame we're going to increment the fps work in progress and then um, when and when we fun when we call this stepper function oh yeah if i just bring this up we'll blah. Man, I'm not typing well. Yeah, um, stepper is a closure, and it's just keeping track internally of um, of time. And then when you call it, it returns. Yeah, it's used for doing fixed time step stuff. I'll go into that another day. Basically, when we call this, it's going to be true once a second. That's all we need to know. Um, we're going to set the FPS to be whatever the work in progress was, and we're going to set the work in progress back to zero. And that should be it for now. Wow, continue. That seems low. Okay, we're um we're capped at 60 frames a second for some reason. Um that'll be there's probably some VSync stuff I've left on in NVIDIA settings and I haven't played with yet. It's strange, when we we're on Debian and I went down to this resolution, the frame rate got uncapped and we just hit we'd go off on tens of thousands of frames a second, but you know, this works. Cool, so what we're also going to do then is we're going to have a variable called um, delta and let's leave it one to begin with and we're going to set it to be, what are we going to set it to be? One divided by the frames a second. So this is this is a number we can multiply by to scale things down to our frame size. So if, if you're trying to move an object like a hundred units in one second, uh, let's do, let's, let's just change that around a second. If we're doing a hundred units in a hundred seconds, then we want to move, yeah, one unit a second. So we need to divide that total distance by the number of seconds we currently, like each frame, we're going to need to move a little bit and we don't want to move too Oh, I told you I was a mess today. God damn it, I can't explain anything. Anyway, delta is going to be a 60th of a second. And we're going to multiply anything we're moving by that amount to scale it down. Because we want everything to move at the same rate, depend like regardless of what the frame rate's doing. Hey. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is I want to move the camera forward and backwards with W and S. So we are going to do keyboard button and we take a keyboard and we're taking keyboard zero and because that's optional I'm just gonna call it like this and the button is going to be key dot w so when that's true we're going to move forward so what we're going to need is to take the rotation of the camera and it's a quaternion and we want to turn it into a direction that's going to be a vector 3, which is perfect because our position, if I remember correctly, for our camera is a vector 3. Yep. So we can say V3 plus, and it's going to be the current position of that camera, plus this direction. Now, we this would mean that when we're holding down W, every frame we're going to move one forward. Um... But obviously we're doing, we, we could be doing 60 frames a second, in which case every second we're going to move 60 forward, or we could be doing 1,000 frames a second, but we're going to go 1,000 forward in a second. So we want to scale back based on our frames per second. So this is where we're going to use that delta. So V3 times, and uh, times S is times by a scalar, which is a number, the single float. And that's going to be our delta. So now if we go over here and I press W, nothing's happening or is it that's it's just uh it could just be that oh of course nothing's happening we're not calling this function yet fool right where's our main loop it's down here somewhere so we have a right down here we have our main loop and it's calling draw every frame we should probably give this a better name Ah, but it's fine for now. Right, let's go down here and we're going to step the host and then let's update our camera here. Update camera. 
We're gonna have to move some stuff out to separate files soon because this is gonna get confusing otherwise. There's the camera we're using. Okay, so now, go back here and I press W. And now it still looks like nothing's happening. But now I'm not sure if it's due to, it could just be that the number is now very small. Yep, see, high is, oh yeah, we're adding, we're adding things together, but we're not actually setting that value back onto the camera. So what we can do instead, we'll do uh, V3 increment, inc f like this, because this is, uh, this is mutating. Um, so this is going to change this value rather than just making a new one. Pomdevim is asking, um, when you write key W, do you take care of the keyboard layer or is it SDL or system? Okay, so... I have the actual value of key W is going to depend on what backend it is. Um, but I can actually show you. Let's go. But basically there's some there's some stuff in Skidder for this. So if I go to SDL2 keys, you can see I've got all these constants here, and these are the values from SDL2. And then in in glob, I've also got a keys file that has a bunch of these values. And they're the same. Okay, fine. But um, but yeah, that's that's it. There's there is a bit of glue going on here to make things nice. But you don't have to use this if you don't want. To. Right. Let's bring the REPL up again. So now we worked out at least that we're getting high when we press the button, which just means this is very small. Um, so we do want to multiply by our delta, but we also want to say. We want to travel 10 units a second, for example. So now, hopefully, yeah, there we go. So that's for key W. Let's do it for key S so we can move backwards. And instead of incrementing, we're going to decrement. And so now we should be able to move backwards and move forwards. Nice. And then we want camera motion to be controlled by the mouse. So what we should be able to do is, and I'm going to do it because I'm moving the mouse around a lot. I'm going to do it so it's only when I'm holding down the mouse button that the rotation happens. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Pondipin. Um Right. It's the same for all the keys, damn it. And coffee. Oh, man. The other thing I've been working on this last week is uh, wrapping up a physics engine called Newton Dynamics. It's a lovely physics engine. It's really cool and it's just just so nice to use. And they provide so many hooks that are making the, the integration really good. But um, but it's a bit slow at the moment. And this is something I've seen a couple of times in Keppel, like when I've been using it, is that I, I wrote it so it would it should be. I hope, possible to make fast, but I haven't made it fast yet. And so I've avoided a lot of places like, I've, I've avoided methods and stuff like this, or, or be at least trying to be too clever with cloths because then you get dispatch costs and those I won't be able to work around. And everything else, like I've been trying to make it so I can work around any problems, but things are a bit slow at the moment. And so I've been, uh, so I did the physics engine, but then it took a, uh, the FPS took a bit of a dive and I got quite sad about that. And so it's time to do profiling. So I've made a little profiler because the, like, so SBCL, uh, the Lisp compiler comes with a statistical profiler, which is so good. But the um, accuracy of the, uh, where is it? There's a function for getting time, which is a uh, get internal real time, but it's only got millisecond accuracy, which isn't good enough for a lot of our stuff because some of the, a lot of the functions are obviously running sub millisecond. And so they start to look like a big mush, like everything sets around the same speed and it's hard to tell what's faster than what. So I've made a little profiler um, that started working today. So that's pretty cool. So I hope I'll be able to get things faster soon. Um, we'll see how that see how that goes. I just saw my um, connection go from green to yellow and I'm just wondering, oh no, it's sitting around fine. If you see any flickering, let me know. Just kind of, I've been really pleased so far. All the connections been like solid every week, and I'm, I'm stoked about that. So yeah, physics engine is coming. Uh, we'll do, we'll play with that another week when it's fast. Um, what was it? Performance stuff is in the works. 
There was something else as well. The game pads I was doing this week. I don't know. There's some stuff. There's some stuff. Mouse. Mouse, 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 mouse. Where are we? Okay, so we wanted to do when the mouse button was down. So we've got mouse button. Um, and we're going to get the first mouse. Same thing with the keyboard. Um, mouse button zero. And we're just going to say hi when it's down. Does that work? No. What did I do? Mouse button, input source, index zero. Value zero is not type boolean control. That's a bit worrying. It's rather strange, actually. Um, that suggests the mouse wasn't populated. We did load things in a bit of a strange order. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, looks like the mouse wasn't correctly initialized. Okay, so normally you would just do capital.skitter in your package and then when um, yeah then, then basically when the mouse got created the first time ah, I know why this was because we accessed the mouse before I loaded um, uh, was it skitter.sdl and so yeah that mouse wasn't populated with all the details from SDL anyway that's that's a bit that's a bit janky I should make that experience a bit better how shall I hack around this? What I can do actually, I, this is not recommended practice, but this will do. Uh, where's mice or mouses or mice? Oh, I did start uh, plus. Okay, fine. Um, that's not the correct syntax, but never mind. Um, let's see what happens now. Okay, that's it. I think we're back. And then. Hmm. But we're not getting input yet. Okay. Mouse. Mouser? No. Um, continue that. Mouse. Here's a mouse. And it's got lots of buttons for the look of it. Yeah, it's got plenty of buttons. I wonder what it is. It's kind of interesting. A little disconcerting as well. Um, okay, we'll come back to that. Let's just see if we can get any data out of the mouse position because that's going to be a bit of a showstopper if that's not working. If it if it's not initialized properly, I'm just going to restart this little demo and we'll we'll carry on. There appear to be teething problems. Mouse mouse position. There we go. Um, yeah, we're really. Oh yeah, there's only one position, so I don't need to say zero there. Yeah, there we go. We've got we've got data coming in. Okay, so some of this is working. Why mouse button though? That's really interesting. Oh, I know why. Of course, these aren't. I, I'm I'm not remembering how to use my own stuff. It's mouse dot left. It's the same as with keys. We have specific constants for that to deal with the fact that we get different things on different platforms. So now we can say when this print high, clear all this garbage away, and then when we click, there we go, there's high. Cool. So that's when the mouse is pressed down, and we're going to do the rotation. So this is going to be set the rotation of the camera to be, how we do this? Well, we, we should take, maybe we can just take the mouse position. Let's get mpos be the mouse position, and well, this is mouse position of mouse. And we'll set the rotation to be, it's a quaternion, so we make one of those from fixed angles. And then we're going to use, actually, is there one? F yeah, there we go. From, from a vector three of fixed angles. And then we can use the mouse position, which is going to be a vector two and some other number. And hopefully now, when I go over here and press this, nothing... Oh, Jesus, it's all over the shop. Okay. Now, it could just be that no, that number is going to be very high. Maybe we want to use mouse move, really. Actually, mouse move. 
Okay, not quite. Let's set off the rotation of the camera to be back to default, which is an identity. Um, let's take a minute to talk about mouse buttons. Yeah, man, you should have asked again because I totally forgot how to do it. Um, Darius, I wanted to ask if it, you can make it mouse dot something just like the key. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I made sensible decisions when I was awake, but now, now we don't know what's happening. I'm interested with this, what's going quite so wrong. Now, before I mentioned that mouse move was a decaying control, and that means we need to start telling it when to decay. Once again, because Keppel isn't an engine and none of this stuff is, is one big product, we can't say for sure when you want to end your frame. So Skidder wants you to tell it when you're done with the last set of values. So we're gonna go down to draw, 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 and then right at the end, we're going to tell Skitter to decay the events, and that's all we need. Um, now, if we go and let's um, comment this out for a second and print mpos. Actually, I, I should show you the reason for decay decaying values properly. Let's um, let's remove this bit, and so we'll get printing all the time. And we can see mouse movements going on here, and then everything returns to zero. Even if I move out the screen, everything is returning to zero. Now, if I take away that decay, there are cases where, see that it's still two on the left-hand side? And if I move quickly and leave the window, so it still thinks, it's telling you every frame, it's going up minus 92x and four up, right? So... This is why uh, we're not going to get an event to tell us that we're not moving. So we need to tell the system to clear out the old events. And that's the difference between the decaying and the regular things. Position, of course, doesn't need to decay because we only get an event when it's updating. When, and we want to, like, if you move your mouse somewhere, it's there. Perfect. I was searching for decay events last time. Nice. There we go. Again, it was just something when I made up this this system. I'm not sure if any of this is good practice. This is just the stuff that I ran into um, trying to make things because originally I was doing everything like callback based. I thought that'd be really cool to have like the events come in and they fire callbacks and those callbacks are callbacks. Basically, you can compose all these systems together and that'd be really sweet. But then you still end up having to cache events because I would get to like say I would press up and I would want that to move my character. So it would send the up key has been pressed down to my character and the character would move. But then the, does the character draw them? Like how much other stuff has to be updated when I'm moving that character? And it felt like the input system was driving all the events, um, which kind of sucked. And it really didn't work when I was doing uh, the entity component system stuff. Because then you're trying to update things in batches. We're going to update all the movement of all the entities. And then we'll update all the health of all the entities and all this kind of stuff. And there I wanted the entity component system to be driving the update of the game, not some inputs that just happened to be coming in. Um, so yeah, wasn't too stoked about that. So now I've just gone back to we cache events and you poll them. You just query what you need. Uh, Pom de Bim, serious question about decay and events can be shared between frames like drag, how to deal with it. Drag is something you probably want to implement yourself. Um, the semantics would depend on, yeah, I mean like, yeah, that, that's something you'd probably want to compose yourself. Um, because what you're dragging has meaning inside your project. So does a drag stop when your mouse cursor leaves the window or does it keep going or things like that? I, I think there'll be some subtlety there. Um, Mark Amato, in contrast to most questions about decay, which aren't serious. <laughs> Light-hearted decayment. Right, uh, let's have a look. What have we got here? Okay, so we are going to take the mouse move. It's not mouse pos anymore, it's mouse... Oh, let's just call it move. And then we're going to use it to set this quaternion. Hopefully. These values might be quite high. So that's still going... Oh yeah, because I need this, this on... So now when I hold it down, oh, 
Dear. Oh, that's very flickery. I don't think that's working yet. Oh yeah, mouse move's going to be returning to zero every frame. Okay, so we maybe we do want to use position, but position was a bit crazy, so maybe we can scale it down. Let's do mouse position, but then we'll do position and scale the vector down to something sensible. No points. No one. Um, cos and what was that? Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. Oh, now that's moving stuff, but everything seems to be rotating weirdly, and I've got a good idea of what that is. That means we're multiplying, oh sorry, we're doing our translation and our rotation in the wrong order, and things are freaking out, and that's up here. So translation and rotation, let's reverse that. Oh, and now I'm a bit confused. Well, that's kind of what I want. I kind of want to base on the normalized position in the window. So we have zero, zero be the center and those kind of things. That might be quite nice. Or maybe we can just base it on, um, hmm. Maybe we should keep a, some state around saying we can just add the mouse position. I'm wondering how we do I wonder if we can, um, if we use mouse move, that's going to return to zero. So we just need to add the rotation on to what we've already got. That should be a case of multiplying, I think, with quaternions. I, this is somewhere I get a little hazy on this stuff. Because I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, let's go back to mouse move again. And we will scale it a bit to keep it sensible. And then we will make a quaternion uh, from fixed angles. If this doesn't work, we'll just um, we'll take a different approach. But let's just see if we can get it to work. That's not. Oh dear, that's a bit insane, though. Yeah, I'm. I have not understood this yet clearly. Unless I meant to normalize it. If in doubt, normalize something. That'll probably work. No. <laughs> yep, I don't know what I'm doing here. That's fine. Okay, let's go back to our um, let's go back to our fixed angles. And so we could have um, hmm, what's the best way to do this? Let's just wind this back a bit. If you folks have lots of experience with quaternions and know how this is meant to work, please let me know. Yeah. So the... What are the values for the position going from... Basically, which direction is... So this is zero up here. Oh, that's not nice. I want zero to be the bottom. I'm gonna have to fix that in Skidder. I want everything to be based on the kind of GL logic. Hmm. Wonder if I should fix that now. Yeah, otherwise I'm just gonna forget. Let's take another detour from our detour. So detour some more. No, but that's gonna require knowing Let's no, okay. Let, let, let's leave that for now. <laughs> I can get back to that later. I don't want to cause any more problems. So, right. So this is this way, and we can get the... Let's get the current size. So the viewport dimensions. Oh no, we can just use the current surface. Um, in the couple context, and use the surface dimensions I think let's see what that gives our data as ah surface resolution is brings it back as a vector 2 there we go so that's res and this screen size is too small so let's move that up here 
Then we are going to divide by, we have to divide by scalar? Yes, we do. And we're gonna divide it by um, the resolution. In that case, just a regular divide. Um, and so now the value should be in a zero to one range. If I do this and do, yep, it goes from zero up here to one down there. And then we are going to, um, ah, let's just do it simple. Right, so we go B2 multiply by scalar, scalar multiply by two, uh, minus one. Really kicking myself. I can't remember the quaternion stuff right now, but um, it'll have to do. Oh, we? Oh, nasty. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ugh, that's feeling flipped. Let's just try that. There we go. That's all right. That's kind of okay. And then... I'm just gonna have some scaling factor that we could use for a little bit of post-processing so we can rotate further. Oh, it's good TV when you can't work out what's going on. Right. Okay, so anyway, we should be able to... Have I, have I managed to... I'm still not happy with that Y rotation. It feels weird. But anyway, we should be able to fly around here now and get up and look at the shininess. Maybe I had the rotation, the Y rotation the right way to begin with. Let's go back here. Oh, of course, yeah, we're using X for the... Oh, okay, right. Let's just do. Let's invert them both. Just keep on slapping things on it until it feels right. There we go. That feels nicer. There we are. Cool. Now we can see our work from last week. This is way easier than setting values all the time. We should have done this in the beginning. Ooh, shininess. Well, without well, ind indentation, Lisp is really bad. Yeah, it would be a pain. Oh, yeah, everything at the left? That would suck. I'm not going to do that with everything. Jesus. Take this. Mmm, readable. Um, hello, notifications. Skidder X, Y, Wheel, uh, Vec event should be the same as your mouse move. Same as my mouse move? I'm confused, Darius. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, quaternion to direction. Um, I'll try that. I want to try what you've done now. That looks cool. But we don't want to change the position in this case. We're changing the rotation, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give that a go. Totally. Let's, uh, let's do that. Right. We will... What should we do with this? Comment it all out. Let's try this. So we've got... Da -da 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 -da. Back three. Ah, uh, yeah, I see what you're talking about now. Cool. Camera pause. And it's the camera. Oops. Camera. Um, V3 times S. Returning in two direction. I love that someone knows my stuff better than me. That's so cool. Uh, rotation of the camera. <laughs> um, oh yeah, that would... 
Yes, that, that would uh, allow you to do mouse wheel control um, to change the position. I'm having a free tilt camera where I can tilt left and right. Oh, cool. Change direction. And then, whoops. Skitter, and then we were gonna use, oops, don't need the skitter in there because we've included the package. And you were saying, yeah, and then you're saying use mouse move. Mouse, is that roughly what you were saying? Oops. There we go. Oh yeah, of course we want to do V3 increment because we've got to set the position. Ooh. Well, that's controlling it. Oh yeah, so this is Y positions controlling our position. But uh, we don't get to see rotations then. That was nice. Cool. Let's move that guy down here for now. In case we need him again. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh. Even when I can't remember what I'm doing, this is still fun. Right. And this black is actually starting to get on my nerves. One second. Uh, clear color. I just want something that's not totally black. Of the Keppel context, we're going to set this to be not, not 3, not 3, not, not 5, not. There we go. Well, it's visible to me, not so visible on the stream, but that's pretty ugly actually. <laughs> I want to make that slightly darker. God damn, I haven't got enough distractions. 1, 1, 2, there we go, top there. Ugh. Let's go for a dark ray instead. If in doubt, more ray. At least it's not totally black now. That's good. Right, so we've got some mouse moving. And now we've got Skidder in. That We're seeing some objects disappear there and that's because our far plane where things are getting chopped off is it quite close. So I think we should go and find where we make our um, projection. Here it is. And here our far plane is set to 60. So let's just change it to 200. Whoa. Cool. Oh no, that was field of view. 60 was our field of view. This is our far plane. Oh, it's 30. That's way too low. There we go. Now we can see everything. Fly right into the middle of these. Yeah, nice. Groovy. So, let's get game pads working. And I want to do that. Um... Hey, cool. This was the code you meant. Right. That's. Uh... Let me load up this paste bin stuff and resize it so I can see you lovely people still. Thank you for just saving my stream, by the way, Darius. <laughs> That's, uh... Oh, right, so you can just... Ah, okay. Yeah, we could just do rotation around the axis, multiply them together, and... See, I wasn't sure if, if like... Because it felt to me like you should be able to do that all in one move, but yeah, rotation around axis should be fine. That's a good idea. And then I guess you just... Yeah, set the rotation to be multiplied those together, normalized. Ah, and you multiply them with the initial um, rotation quaternion. Does that, um, is that kind of then local rotation to the original direction or? Or that? Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, this seems sensible. Switch back onto the right computer. Ah, oh, nice. Good to know. Right, okay. Darius saves the day. Let's have a look. Let's 
go back here and I am going to cut this but move it down here just in case I get confused and need to resurrect it and we're going to have the we are going to use in this case we can use the mouse movement as well we should be able to add that on is that what you were doing in yours da 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 da, -da. you're doing mouse move this is sorry dude Darius I'm this is super cool to see other people using <laughs> this library this is really fun um doesn't say but that's not a problem we can we can add live this bit now oh i want to bring that down so i can see the stream is still running fine yep there we go nice so let's move b mouse move oops of mouse zero so that's the no yes you don't need that bit <laughs> right so, so then we're gonna get the rotation of our current camera and we're gonna multiply this by and then we're gonna do some rotations around different axes we're gonna do uh, axis angle rotation um, how do we do this from axis angle now I feel like I'm back in familiar territory here we go zero zero oh one zero zero for one dimension and we're gonna ro ro rotate that in the x of why is that called mouse that should be called move let me do that move da, 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 da. and then we're going to rotate in the y now we're going to do x and our x movement is going to rotate in around the y axis so this is that and then this is this one yeah up and down is that motion this motion this is these are the kind of descriptions you come here for every week <laughs> Q times. Okay, so multiply, then we normalize. I'm not sure if we have to normalize between each one or just at the end. We can try that. It's like we have live coding. Right. Q, normalize. Set of rotation of camera. Okay. It's a. I think that's working, but I think it's just going way too fast. So let's scale this down some. Let's do B2 multiplied by scalar, then do not point no one. Oh, that's too much. Let's do just reduce it by 10. Whoa, still really a lot though. Is it really that much? Oh, it was. Oh yeah, that's much better. Oh, well done, Darius. Love it. Hats off to that man. Right. Now I just gotta find out what feels nice as far as the camera, because let's, uh, let's try inverting this first. And, oh, that's, that definitely feels wrong. It's really weird. There's something about mouse movement that I never know which is the right one, except, but I know which is wrong. When I use it, it just feels nasty. But, yeah, that's what I wanted. Beautiful. Right. That's slightly too far still. Cool. Proper job. All right. Let's put our camera up here somewhere. I don't know what orientation we are at this point, but we'll work it out soon enough. <laughs> well, Darius, sorry, what was? Sorry, let's have a look at this. Darius said, "Say again," and then Pondopimi said, "Not all heroes wear capes." That's exactly what I mean by my random mumbling. I'm just excited right now. This is really cool. Uh, Darius should be wearing a cape. That's that's how I just choose to imagine Darius from now on is just in a just always in a cape, just going around and fixing other people's code. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you guys are looking out for me. Right, that took a while. 
Blimmin' egg. We're only just getting started. Now, let's talk game controllers, because they are cool. So, it's this, the input system, Skidder stuff, is really simple for this. Um, but we have to do a couple of things first. Now, this is going to be rather SDL specific, because it's the only thing I've tested so far. But the... There are a lot of controllers, and there are a lot of platforms, and the way the mappings work on different platforms is tricky. So, there was a project, if I can remember what it's called, SDL2 Game DB, maybe, something like that. There was a database. They call it a database, it's a nice little text file. There it is, oh yeah, there we go. Maybe that's it. Community source database of game mappings, right. There's all these Mapping files, which tell for different platforms how, like, what the mappings are. All the information that the SDL needs to be able to use um, these different controllers. This is great, um, but a little tricky for us to consume unless... I mean, I, I tried using the SDL, our SDL2 library, the one the folks made, um, but I had some issues when loading the file. And I think it's just that I'm a Muppet and I did it wrong. But what I did instead, out of confusion, was GitHub. Where are we? Sea baggers. Oh, come on. Oh, I've been watching Freeman's Mind today. So good. I'm just binging on again. I haven't watched it in years. I'm so happy there's like a Half-Life 2 one now. Anyway. Um, there is a library which is going into QuickLisp this month. It will be out in the release that's meant to be happening real soon. Um, and yeah, it's it's exactly the same database as that other one. I've got the link here. I should have just come here. This is great. But it's in Lispy format. So we go in here and we can just see there's a mappings variable with all the mappings for different platforms. And then there's a little function called load, e load db, which will load them all in. So what we can do is we can go ql quick load sdl. So quick load, come on, sdl2 game controller db, and then we do sdl2 game controller db load db, which is the only function, so you can't mess it up, and that's all the definitions loaded. So that's all the different controllers should now work. Um, what else do we want to do? We then want to grab a controller. Now, I haven't wrapped this up in any nice way, so let's just go, it works like this. You say to sdl2 open this controller and you give it an index. Um, I've only got one controller plugged in. We, I'm going to need some abstraction for querying what controllers are plugged in and how they're mapped and all this kind of stuff. But for now, I'm just going to do that. And then we have, apparently, a, a game controller. The last thing we want, and this actually is mainly cool when you're coding with someone. So me and my partner the other day started making a little 2D RPG in Kevl. And uh, he was on the controller um, while I was coding, which was super cool. But to do that, you need to be able to keep um, events coming in even when the window is not focused. So we go to, what is it? Skidder.sdl2. Oh, enable background joystick events. That's all we need. Bam, done, one, apparently. And now we should have input, and we are going to test it in a very simple way. So let's let's get that out of our face. Play with it. We're going to go down to the draw function again and just mess with some stuff. Foo! And the thing we're going to mess with is the first one. So the first of the things. If I bring up the REPL again, because we need to see some things here. Things, these are all our objects. The first one is that one. The position of the first one is that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to some known position. Um, not like that. Not like this. Right. Um, 0, 20. Minus 20. Problem is, I don't know where I'm looking anymore, so I will find it in a second. We got a free look camera now, everything's easy. 
So we are going to set the position, I set the position of the thing based on our gamepad. So we have gamepad 2D, so that's going to be one of the joysticks for the first gamepad. Um, if you've got multiple gamepads, of course, just pass in a number here and that'll be fine. The first 2D input, and we are then going to go V3 plus, we need to turn this into a vector 3, and we are going to want this position here. Maybe that works. Let's grab a controller and see. Oh, one of the moves! One of the moves, we're just not looking at it. Come on, give me some control. There it is! Oh yeah, moving! Excellent. Cool, let's fly around so we can enjoy this from a different angle. Whoa, I know I need to... There it is. That one. Right, let's make it move a bit more, because this is too small. Um, gamepad 2D. B3 multiply by... 10. Oh, no, we've got to multiply by a scalar. Boop. And then, oh yeah, all over the place now. Uh, that's a bit much. Let's back up. <laughs> da, 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 da. Now we've got one moving around. A big old square. That's the extent of... of that. Nice! So that's gamepad input. Same as the mouse, same as everything else. Should be dirt simple. Um, and it works with all the... And I go out of focus. It works with all the inputs I've tested so far. It's it's cool. What we do need though is we're gonna need a way to query and we'll get it from the database. Working out which index is which button name. So we can say, oh, this is triangle, this is X, this is whatever. I'm sure there's data, but if that database doesn't hold it, I'm sure there's information elsewhere. Because we need to let our users come up with custom mappings. But yeah, for now, we've got something that moves. So let's... Let's take this gamepad position and put it in here. Um, and then we're going to take the X of that position and the Y of that position. And now we should be moving. Yeah, that should be X and Z which means we're looking at this at a funny angle. Let's reset our um, set of rotation of camera to be identity. Let's rotate around a bit and see if we can find our, there he is. So that's the one we're controlling, moving on a flat plane. It would be easier actually if we make a box to be the floor. So we can see, is that really? Hmm. Oh no, of course we're at 20, aren't we? Move it down. There we are. So that's down the bottom. We want a play field down here. I want a, a big base that everything falls down towards and then our little controller is going to be, our little player is going to be down here. So, now before we had all of the things falling, I think we want to take, I think we need, so I'm, I'm, in my head I'm thinking if we can make this into a little game. I think the idea is we'll have stuff falling and then we'll have the little dude moving around and I'll go out of focus again. I'm going to go out of focus lots of times just for fun. Um, have it moving around and maybe shoot some stuff. And I've been sent gifts. Master of <laughs> Master of Gifts is in just top form right now. That's me. I'm a '90s child. <laughs> I'm really not. I am really not. Right. Let's. Uh, da, 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 da. I didn't look like that anyway. Okay. We need a object to be our player, and then we can use that things. Other stuff. So down here. So let's make a def var um, player. And oh yeah, this is going to start as nil. And then down in our initialization, where we made spheres. Oh, we've already got a cube stream. Perfect. So we need. We've got a player. Oh, ah, 
Yeah, our objects right now are very basic. They don't store what they are. They just store their position and their rotation. Maybe we should make this a little more... a little more complicated. Just a touch. So I think maybe we put the stream of the objects in the class and then we can just iterate over and pick which one. I'm trying to think of how separate I want this to be. Now, let's do it. Okay, so um, stream init arg stream is something and then init form is nil and accessor is stream. Right, so that's init form for slot. Oh yeah, I've got init form twice. Idiot arg. And I'm not sure if it's going to let us use the word stream. No. Stream is reserved. So we'll just do um, buff stream. Oh, we can call it stream internally. So that's a bolt compilation. And go back and do this. Cool, right. So that's compiled. Now, we initialized things here before. We're actually going to move this down now. So player and thing is going to be here. We're going to go down to our initialization and say, unless things, let's set them up. And now they're going to have a stream um, value passed in. And that's going to be the buff stream, because that was a sphere. Right. And seeing as we've got things set up already, if we look at them, they've been updated so they've all got stream set to nil. But we know what it's meant to be, so we can just go loop for thing in things. Um, do. Oh god, I can't type a shit right now. Set f um, buff stream. A thing to be buff stream. Doot. Right. Now all of those should have their stream set. Yeah. Good. And that should be initialized properly down here, just the same. So now we can go change our rendering. Which is up here somewhere. Render, 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 render. Render all the things. Blam! Draw thing. Oh yeah, we have a dedicated function for this. We're going to have to tidy this up soon, because this is starting to grow big enough that we could have two files and, you know, keep things a little cleaner. But, you know, it's still only 275 lines long, so I'm pretty happy with this so far. It's not too much code. And then where we have the buffer stream up here, instead, we're going to take the buff stream from the thing. And everything still works. Yay! And now what I want is I'm going to, like, when we start up, we initialize, we say unless player, player is compiled, isn't it? Yeah, good. We're going to make an instance to be our player. And this is going to have the cube stream. So we're going to have our player be a cube and everything else be spheres. And because... We're different, we're gonna have to kill them all. That's how it works. That's how it always works. Right, um, so here we go, run that over here. And we have a thing, apparently it's somewhere. No, we're not drawing it yet. Okay, so when we render all the things, we now have to be sure to draw a thing, player with camera. There is nothing for the stream nil. Oh! Why is the stream nil? That's weird. The stream should have been cube stream. Unless cube stream is nil, which it really shouldn't be. Oh, I know, I'm typing the wrong thing. Cube stream. No, that's populated. So what does player look like? Player's nil. I'm a bit confused. Oh, of course, yeah, I've just made an instance and I haven't set it to anything. On fire. Yeah, that's going to be a bit confused for a second. Let's just do this. Check that player is actually initialized now and say continue. 
And I see him! He's over here! I see a cube. Right, oh and yeah, we've given him random position, which is kind of stupid. What we actually want to do is hit, have him at... I think we're going to actually reposition everything again. Because... Our camera used to be hard to control, so we put things far away. And now we're easy to fly our camera around because we've got input. I think we're going to move everything around Origin. So... Our player is going to be at zero, zero, zero. And we're going to set everything else to be at a random, at least 10 above him. And then 40, yeah, so between 10 and 50, that's where everything else is going to be. Um, and we're not going to add this, that's the difference. I'm not going to put everything around minus 25. So now let's let's reposition all our things. So let's set off the position of the player to be zero zero zero. Boop. He's somewhere else now. We'll go find him in a minute. And now we're gonna get move everything else. So we'll say loop for things. Set off the position of the thing to be what shall it be? Some random number. Well down here. There's our square. He's still under. Oh no, <laughs> we're still we're controlling one of the balls, so we're gonna have to change that. Um, I'm gonna say that the initial camera position is now um, not 30. Yeah, ah, what should we do? Set it about 20, and we'll set it at 10 from now on. Oh no, it's the light position. Whoops, I'm an idiot. Camera position was at zero, zero, zero. So now we want to move it back a bit. Remember again, minus 10 is forward because blah. Um, and that should be fine. Yeah, that'll be okay. Let's set our camera to that position now and check it out. So set the position of the camera. There's still some reasons to set the camera by hand every now and again. Zero, 20, 10. Hmm, that's not too interesting. But we also need to set the rotation of the camera to be identity. We can't see our box yet, which is kind of rubbish. So let's move it back a bit more. Maybe it's a bit high. Still feels like we're at a bit of a funny angle here. Unless, no, if we're 10 above, I'm a bit confused about this. Let's put it zero, zero, zero. Oh, is, oh the box is still randomly rotated, I think. Set up the rotation of the, of the player. I'm trying to orientate myself with uh, orient myself with the player. Yeah, and it's set some weird angle. So that's oh okay. There we go. Right now we're facing a sensible direction, and now I can start playing with the position like it actually means something. So what will our starting position be? Let's put it at 15, 20. Okay, and then we'll look down a bit. So I think that's going to be our starting position for our player. Sorry, for our camera. <laughs> oh, what am I doing? Camera. There we go. Here it is. Um. But then we want the angle... Let's just have it look down a little. I don't want to actually rotate in both directions right now. I don't want to rotate in the Y direction. So I'm temporarily just going to turn that off. And hopefully we should just be controlling this angle. Yeah, and then we can look at the box. We guarantee we're not rotating in any other way. And I'm going to just go and fiddle with, where is it, in our draw stuff, when we had controlling the player, yeah, foo, there it was. Um, instead of controlling this, we're going to be controlling the player now. So, thing can be removed. We're setting the position of the player to be this. So now the player should be under 
our control with the input. Yep. Nice. And what else do we need? Oh yeah, now we can go and check the rotation of our camera because if we're happy with the rotation of our camera, then we can use that. Doot. I think that's right. It's good for now. Right, so we have a thing under our control and the X and Y, the vertical position is a bit naff right now. So I want to flip that. So go down to the foo bit. Yeah, that feels better. Cool, we need some ground. So, Ground. The ground is just going to be a big cube, so, well, just a big box. How are we going to, how's the best way to do this? We can either, we can either add scaling or we can just be lazy, and I think I'm going to be lazy. Um, we're just going to make a stream for the floor, so floor stream is nil. arrays and we have arguments oh yeah um if you've if you're if you've been trying this stuff out like Darius has one of the things that can be kind of annoying is that when your main loop is running you don't get um function hints in your mini buffer and that sucks and there is a way to turn it on so if you go if I go to my emacs file I'm trying to think if there's everything I there is, enable, there's a variable in slime that you can set um, called slime inhibit pipelining. If you set this to nil, then it just works. I'm sure there's some downside, which is why they don't do it by default. Could be the ECL and which other ones? A few other ones are single threaded by default. So then having, um, the mini buffer stuff sent down that same channel is going to be blocking and kind of confusing but that is just so useful to have um so i just put in a little function so i can call it from um yeah from metarex right no problem Darius. it's just so nice once this stuff's set up it's just like playtime right so boxes now we can look at the things down the bottom so width um, is going to be, let's just say 40. Height? No. It's going to be depth, surely. Depth is 40. I wonder how I've set this up, actually. Hmm, we'll see. And we're not going to do that. We're going to do floor stream. Blah, blah, blah. Man, this is... Oops, no. Floor stream. I could just call in it again, but it's just so easy to do this. Um... Draw thing. Oh yeah, the floor is going to need its own object now as well. Yeah, this is, see, this is starting to get messy. We should factor this out into a um, into its own function because we're doing this copy paste crap all over the thing, and it doesn't need to be this long. It's really simple stuff. Floor. We're gonna need a layer. Oh, we called it ground. Oh, I'm glad I'm just changing terminology all the way through this. Ground is gonna be called floor. Damn you. Last floor set floor to be instance of a stream. It's gonna be at zero. There's gonna be no rotation, damn it. Q identity, and that goes for matey boy up here too. Okay. And I saw a interesting question in the chat. So we're going to get to that presently. Oh, 
Why aren't you drawing? Where have you gone? Well, yeah, we'll find out in a minute. Um, Cyril Popo. Curious what recommendations you have for Lisp and general uh, CS learning. Is that, I guess, computer science learning? I'm the wrong person to ask about academic stuff because I dropped out of university pretty hard after the first year. And there's something about that setting that I'm just not good at. Which is a shame because the course was amazing and the people there and the lecturers were all fucking fantastic. And it was games programming, which I love, but I failed. So I dropped out after the first year because I could just couldn't get myself to think on cue. Uh, I don't know. It's really annoying. Um, yeah, as far as resources for learning Lisp. Land, like, unfortunately, a lot of, like, there's, other than the Gigamonkeys link that Pondapem has just put in the chat, um, a lot of the good resources are in print. Um, so, the book I started out with uh, was Land of Lisp. Basically, I just, I took a week's holiday and worked through Land of Lisp, and that was great. Um, there was a couple, I started doing... Uh, Peter Norvig's practical, what was it, practical, the common list for AI stuff. Um, I started working through that and that gave me a few kind of like breakthroughs which are really nice. Land, the point of Land of Lisp is amazing. Land of Lisp is amazing. It's a great book. Um, my only recommendation is don't set up Lisp the way he says because he's a, he reckons using C Lisp which is a bit old now and doesn't guide you through this stuff so i'd say check out my videos on setting up emacs and common lisp um, and then the rest of the book is brilliant absolutely fantastic just do it whatever he says but um yeah there's a link in the chat for land of lisp it's great after that there's a book called ansi common lisp by paul graham which is just the best like half tutorials and then half reference manual and it's just it's just perfect it's really nice and i still dip into that every now and again there was a, mm, yeah, I wonder how useful that is. Let me just see if I can find it. One second. Uh, oh, sorry. There was a uh, common list kind of like pamphlet. It was like a cheat sheet thing. Which just had a low, it was a really little t tiny reference. It was like a rectangle like this and you could print it out. It was quite lovely. I can't find my copy of it, but that's free online. I'd say the, the best free resources are, um, are definitely the GigaMonkeys link. You, be, you basically want to get through enough that, enough knowledge that suddenly, um, that the hyperspec becomes useful. Because the hyperspec is actually quite good as far as specs go, but it's very thorough. So like, it's hard going to read it. It's very precise and everything. Um, so you have to get to a certain level of knowledge before you can comfortably use it. And the examples in there are pretty pain in the bum. So th there's that. I'm trying to think, what were the best resources? Damn, that's kind of tricky. I had a weird route. So basically my approach was I went on to Stack Overflow and um, I read every answer by Rainer Joswick. Rainer Joswick is prolific on there, and he knows most things about Common Lisp. Um, and so I just read every answer to every question that made sense to me. <laughs> Unless they were really specific. And then uh, then I read just every question on Stack Overflow for Common Lisp, which was, there's a few thousand of them, so you just read. But um, I, I, I wasn't living here, and I didn't have a, as interesting a job at the time, so it was quite easy to distract myself with just a few... Questions every now and again. MIT Press. Structure and interpretation of computer programs. That's a scheme thing though, right? Like uh, SICP's scheme. So Common Lisp will be... Uh... I haven't actually done SICP yet. I really should someday. Um... Ooh, what's that one? CLQR. What's this? Yes, that's the quick reference. That's the one. That's the PDF I was talking about. It's a little terse. But every now and again, it's just super useful. If that's your thing, then it's like... Oh yeah, On Lisp by Paul Graham. That's very good. Actually, it's very good. Yeah, he's got one... Um, was it On Lisp? The one which introduces you, like, builds up com like builds up Lisp from first principles. It's like the original uh, Lisp paper. Now, this On Lisp is the... Um, one on a lot of macros and stuff. Was it Lisp history? The roots of Lisp. Here we go. 
One second. Yeah. Actually, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, Roots of Lisp. You can download it from there. Uh, Zero Probable, I highly recommend you work through that. It's like 15 pages. And at the end, you have a Lisp interpreter. And the Lisp interpreter is tiny. Because this is basically him treading through... But the original Lisp paper was really, really small and really amazing. But the but Lisp didn't look like this in the first version. It was square brackets and... I mean, it was designed to look like Algol, but like structural. Um, but they never they never completed that syntax. But Led Over Lambda is also... Um, it's also a really good book. It's one of those to read just go, when you when you go in, um, know that that dude already knows what the best language in the world is. And he's decided it's Common Lisp. Like, what you're seeing in there is one guy's view of how to do programming. And it's really cool. Some of the tricks you can learn in FMacro stuff are awesome. Some of them are not a good idea. Um, his... Uh, this isn't going to make much sense, but people have read it. There's a Jensen macro that's introduced very early in the book that is buggy. It just doesn't... It assumes uh, things about the behavior of quasi-quote which are not in the standard, and so don't work in SBCL. So, uh, yeah. But it's a fun book to read, and there's some kick-ass stuff in there, especially around performance and things like that. Oh, it's great fun. Great fun. Yeah, as far as a resource for learning about macros, I guess, on Lisp. I don't think I've read that all the way through, actually. I really should. Oh, that's cool. I've got something new to read. Maybe I'll do that this holiday. Why isn't the floor drawing? Why? What have we done? What have I done? Oh, I'm on the wrong computer. Let's jump back. Oh, we're so distracted as usual. That's great. Let's have a look. What could it be? Maybe we are inside it. There's all our balls. Nope. It doesn't look like we're inside it. Okay. Scrolling in a bit. Need to make that a little faster. On list goes all the way to embedded prologue. Yeah, that's cool. Um, there's a really nice prologue project that was showed at um, European List Symposium. The guy who was doing... All the videos are online. He did a talk on general game playing with common list when he was doing ai stuff and it and he has a fairly decent um prologue implementation and all that kind of stuff in common list ready to go the the stuff from uh, on lisp and practical common list are cool and there are packages but they're kind of messy um the yeah it's it's good i really should uh, pull some of that in at some point and do something with it but having time right what do we do with floor It's a thing. Good. It should be. And it's apparently at zero, zero, zero. What is going on then? Let's inspect it. It's got a stream. I wonder what's going on. Its rotation's not weird, is it? Nope. Boring as it could be. And apparently we're drawing it. I mean, it looks like we are. If we take away everything else... Oh! Wait, what? Have I given it... Oh, I gave it the cube stream. Oh, that's why. We need to use... Didn't we make a, f a, um, a floor stream for this? Yeah, we did. Floor stream! So we can set up the buff stream of floor to be the floor stream there we go hey a play field nice we can, we're gonna need another texture um how should we do this this is kind of annoying i really need to be able to get the links from this machine onto this machine in a nice way because at the moment i'm switching and hmm i wonder what the best way to do that is Maybe I can bring up the chat on this machine. Let's go to twitch.com slash... No, it's not. It's twitch.tv slash baggers. Right. 
Could one of you folks look for a texture for us to use on the floor? That would be really cool. And then I'm going to take the chat, which we've got here, and pop it out. And hopefully that will work. Right. Okay. So, if you guys can find a texture to put on the floor, and maybe one for the... Um, one for the player as well would be nice. That'd be cool. Um, but now we've got, yeah, this dude, but we're at the same height. So we're going to need to drop the floor down slightly. So the position of the floor is currently this. And we're going to set it to be 0, minus 1, 0. Uh, that's nice. Now we can move this guy around on the floor. End paren, if you want to do the lisp alien on there, we can totally do that. Um, lava for the floor. The floor is lava. Yeah, sure. Why not? Where is it? Um, that one. And yeah, fine. <laughs> it looks terrible. I love it. Save it in the jazz. Uh, yeah, we'll just, where are we? Desktop. What we'll need to do though is because this is all so far under a um, open source license, we'll need to get some assets which we own. But for now, this will do. So let's Code, lisp, oh, not just the damn lips, lisp, um, play with verts, lava. Oh, it's a llama, llama face. Right, dirt, load, image to texture, um, code, lisp, not the works, um, play with verts, lava. There we go, texture. And then, um, def, uh, <laughs> Floor uh, sampler is nil, and then set a floor sampler to be sample this, and then when we draw our we draw a thing, where do we get its texture from? We must be passing it in. Albedo is albedo sampler. So now. Every object also needs to specify what the sampler is. So let's look down here. It's stream and it's sampler. It's in it. Uh, sampler in it. Ah, oh, come on, fingers. We can do this. In it form. In our accessor is sampler. Can we redefine that? It's a type, but it's not a function. That should be fine. Um, not the alien, but a Lisp logo nonetheless. Let's have a look. Yeah, he's going to look a little squished up though, isn't he? Like, um, we could put him on the cube, but it'd be a bit of a mess. Eh, doesn't matter. But anyway, oh, we got to get the uh, lava going, haven't we? So, right, everything has a sampler now, and... That means, what do we do? Albedo. Where did we load that in? Albedo sampler is here. So then when we go down and make our things, we're going to use um, sampler. It's going to be albedo sampler. We'll use the same one for the player for now. And then for the floor, we're going to go and make the floor sampler. And now we're going to set up the sampler for the floor. Oops. Oh, this is fun. All right. Uh, to be the floor sampler. And there's a couple of things to do. We need to set the player sampler to be the albedo sampler. And we need to loop for the others. Setting the sampler for the thing. This is something we're going to have to design later on. Some kind of um, general system for going and querying and updating objects in like some sensible way. I mean, there is there are mechanisms in Common Lisp when you change a class that you can override what happens. I tell you what we should have do, done actually is just use... Ah, never mind. Never mind. We could have done this in one move, but I wasn't thinking, so... Okay. Now, hopefully, everything has a sampler set. And we can go back to 
just make sure floor, player, and things all have samplers. Yeah, it's just so in future when we do this, it works. And we've got draw thing. Now instead of picking the albedo sampler from there, it's going to pick the sampler of the thing. Hey, <laughs> lava! Cool. More suggestions. Again, he's going to be all squished up. We need a little square one. Can't you just call in it and some uh, should be queued between drawers, right? Yeah, actually, Darius, I, sh I should just be calling in it. I don't know why I'm doing this. I got just got in the habit of doing that today. I don't know why. I've even, I even put the unless in there for that reason. Stupid. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so we have lava floor. And we have some control. It's really jittery. But then we need to go back and get everything moving again. So update thing. So it's going to be called enemies now because the things have become enemies. Oh, actually, it's, let's, let's leave it as thing because otherwise I'm going to have to change multiple things. Ah, can't be bothered. Right. Right, so that's our stuff falling. We're going to change the logic a little. I don't want to rely on mod for reasons. Um, so I want to decrement the Y position by some number times by our delta, our time delta. Uh, so now this already is valid across multiple machines. Each one could have its own speed, technically. We just add that to the... Uh... Yeah, there we go. That looks all right. Oh, yeah, now they're all just falling through. We need to say... Um, of course, because we're not modding. Now, when the Y of the position is less than zero, set off the Y position to be... 40. Now hopefully they'll all have been put up. Up here. Now they come. But now they're all in sync because all of them got teleported back to 40 at once. So we'll we'll randomize their positions a bit. Um, come on, loop. We've got a few of those. There we go. There we are. That's what we used last time. Okay, so now that's where we were before. It's kind of annoying that they disappear when they hit it directly. So let's do when it's less than minus two. Let's make them fall a little faster. Yeah, that's all right. Now they go through before they disappear. Just looks like a different kind of garbage. Right, so now we can move around and I want the mouse button to make bullets and then we're gonna make bullets move. So it's gonna be the same kind of logic. The bullets are going to be a thing. Um, we're a square, so we're going to fire. We're a cube's going to fire little cubes at them. Uh, we miss explosions when balls fall in love with Michael Bay style. Totally. Uh, we should have. We'll have to add effects to that later on. And also camera shake. We want camera shake. We could probably do that soon. Um, Jace is saying update instance for a redefined class. They get messy fast though. Well, there's also a met. There are also the meta object protocol and some hooks you can use. Yeah, it's totally true. I, I was I was worried it would get messy. Um, that's something I just need. I, I do need to give some thought at some point. There are, there'll be ways of doing it. We have just. I mean, at the moment we've just got things in random lists, so we would have some kind of um, more structured way of adding and removing things and querying it. We could just say map things or map. I mean. We, we could totally do that, but um, I guess that's for another stream. Right now, we're just going to hack everything in. So um, a bullet is going to be made. Um, let's do this. Let's do a few things. So dev class bullet, which is going to be a thing. 
we're going to set a couple of things in advance because we'll know them. Uh, we won't need to set any of this. That'll just work anyway. Uh, init form is going to be, oh, that was annoying. Uh, init form is going to be cube stream. Um, and we're going to have very similar logic to the balls, really, but in reverse. It's just going to move upwards, and then when it gets past a certain height, it'll delete itself. Um, oh yeah, of course. I, I am not a fan of this syntax. Never mind. Okay, so we're going to make bullets, and we're going to make them on press, but... We're going to need some kind of timing there to make sure that we don't just spawn a ridiculous number of bullets. Um, player is under foo, and so we say when. It's all inside the let. How strange. Ooh, something weird there. When um, gamepad button. Button, isn't it? Yeah. Gamepad button for the gamepad, and it's button zero. This is the problem. Right now I'm saying button zero. Which button is that on my PlayStation controller? <laughs> Don't know. I, I know in this case actually it's X, but that's kind of annoying. Like we're going to have to be able to query which one's which. We'll get there. Gamepad button. What's the time? Okay. Still going. Um, make instance of bullets and the position is going to be whatever the position of the player is that makes sense so if I go over here and click a few times and then go in our REPL and say bullets the variable bullets is unbound continue Wow, everything is catching up. That's something we're going to have to think about as well. Like when we cause an error, we stop a frame. Which means that the frame time is now really long. So I think we should probably just... Like we're going to have to, we're going to, have to do a better job. We should actually be using frame time for our delta rather than FPS in general. And then um, we'll just say if the delta is over a certain amount of time, like... We'll say, like, the minimum of one and this. Is that right? Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. Formed of him has a question. Can you control the fact the four is um, part of the clipping step in the rendering chain? So the objects go through really disappear. Yeah, I mean, you can... I'm trying to think... So... I'm not sure... I mean, yes, we can control whether... It... No, maybe I'm not understanding, actually. Now I'm trying to think about it. The clipping step in the rendering chain. Everything gets clipped. That's one thing you can't stop happening. Um... So that the object that goes through really disappears. Yeah, I'm not sure I get you on that one, Pomegum. I have to rephrase for my simple brain. Okay. Um. Right. That should be a nice damage. Uh, let's see. What now? Um... Oh yeah, I was getting confused why bullets didn't exist. Yeah, it just doesn't yet. That's annoying. Bullets, okay. And then, what are we adding to them? Foo, making, oh, we were just making instances and not doing with them, right. Push this onto bullets. So now if we go over here and we click a few times, oh yeah, we still got camera control. Oh no, that was it. Gamepad button. 
bullet should now have some bullets in it. Yay! Length. When we hold down a bullet, like so, so we're just going to make more random variables here. We need, we would need a system for this at some point. Um, so, can fire um, is going to be true until you do this, and then. We're going to set f can fire to be nil. Um, so if gamepad button, then we are going to prog on. Ah. Make a bullet, say we can't fire anymore. And then. Um, when we release the button, we can set can fire back to true again. And then this will be when we can fire. I think that makes sense. We'll see in a minute when we actually start trying to do this. Yes. Not got anything silly going on there yet. Okay. So that should mean that you have to click every single time to... Um, to get it to fire. So you can't just hold down and cheat. Okay, I got it myself. Okie dokie. Sorry, mate. Dude, totally fine. You see the state I'm in today. Don't worry about it. Um, I don't know if there's a way to tell OpenGL use define clipping plane. Now, I think you control that. Like, the clipping is going to be at the... Is, is at the clipping... Um, is in clip space. So it is that box defined by the size of the W coordinate. So, I mean, you can you can make the effective clipping plane by transforming everything, so it gets clipped in that way. But but that wouldn't get rid of the. I mean, that that would only chop off the balls at a certain place rather than. And we can just move them back up to the top whenever we want. So clipping won't be our friend in this instance. A cool question though. Right. So now we need updates. So let's go and look for our bullets again. Update bullet, bullet. That's oh, just base thing with bullet. Bam, 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 bam. We get the position. We increase the position by 16 every time. Oh, it's 16 units per second. And then when it's greater than, I don't know, somewhere way off screen, 50, probably fine. Uh, then we will just delete it. So we will um, is delete. I'm trying to remember how this works. Ah, screw it. I'll just do set f bullets to be um, remove bullet from bullets. There's a destructive version of this that I think it's delete, and I think you still have to set it afterwards because of something in the spec. Can't remember. Anyway, update bullets. Update things, oops, things. Render all the things, was updating here. Um, now we're gonna do the same for bullets. Our bullet is a thing, so we can draw it in the same way. Um, I think that's all right. Whoa, no, that was wrong. No, come back. There they come. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Uh, for bullet in bullets. There we go. We're drawing everything twice at the moment, but oh. Oh yeah. Wow. Ah, uh, we're going to have to do something about that frame rate. We can just fudge it around for now, but that's going to become annoying. Hey, cool. Ba 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 bang. We've got bullets. Ba 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 bang ba bang bang bang. bang. We're going to need sound effects too. That's another day. Um, there's some good libraries for that actually that we can we can use. Okay. So now we're starting to get something that's vaguely called playable. Um, the fact that the distance we can move is square is kind of sucky. I mean, it feels kind of sucky anyway. It feels like it should be normalized. 
But the whole control of the joypad on the PS3 feels very strange in general. And if we hold down, see, we're not firing. We have to... We have to click. Um... Hmm. Now what? I mean, there's a few things. If we're going to be able to actually play this and it not suck, all the balls are going to have to have shadows uh, on the ground. It's interesting these are all black, actually. I guess... Oh, I know what that is. That's because I doubt we've given... The bullets, uh, where are the bullets made? Make instance of a bullet. Now we don't give it a stream. So that's fine. We should also, like, bullets should be smaller as well. It would be nice if we could pass in if everything had a scale, so we could scale everything. It's like basically working out now how much I want to hack in right now. Oh yeah, we can we can just fudge this. Let's just fudge it. Right, so where's where's draw thing? So we can have an optional uh, scale and the default is one. And then um, we'll pass that scale up. Scale. We'll come back to you in a second. We go to some pipeline, which is over here, and we go to the Vertex shader. And then we're going to take scale in as a uniform. And then we're going to multiply this by a scale. And all of them are going to disappear because currently scale is zero. Um, scale. And then everything comes back. And then our bullets. When we're updating them, we can pass in 0.1. And now when we fire them, they're tiny, but they're a bit too small. So let's say that. We need a nice green texture, some lasery texture for our bullets. If someone wants to handle that. And I'm going to call it a day soon because we're coming up on 10 o'clock and that's a couple of hours. So it didn't quite get as much done, but it's starting to look more gamey. I wonder if we can... Let's do a really simple death thing for the, the balls, right? If if the range between the bullet and... So yeah, okay, wait, update thing, update thing. Um, so we... How do we do this? Dun, 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 dun. Say when the... Let's take the... We're going to have to loop through all of the... Loop for... Bullet in bullets. Do. And it's. Um, there's, there's some clauses to loop that are actually kind of interesting. There's always and there's a few others. Oh god, this used to confuse the crap out of me. It still does to a degree. Always until never there is a uh, while well form always. Never. Or I've just got to uh, work something out here in one, two, three. Never even PI. Nail. Okay. And if I did this, true. Cool. Yes. Right. Now we've got it. Okay. Um, bullet and bullets never. And then we're going to take the position. What happens if there's no things in here? Oh yeah, then it's fine. Um, we'll say the... We're going to find out the vector length. And if it's less than the radius of the sphere, which is 1. So we put a little bit of a fudge factor on there. 1.2, we would work this out more correctly another day. Um, let's take the position of the bullet and subtract the position of the bullet 
4 minus the bullet. Sure, yeah, we, the uh, thing doesn't matter anyway because it's going to be normalized by the length. Um, so, unless this is true, then we set of things to be remove thing and things. We might have got the logic right. Huh. Well, it hasn't crashed yet anyway. Ah! I think, I think we can shoot them. Like, it's hard to tell because... Right, let's slow this down and see if we're actually hitting them. Right, so where is the update speed? Eight. Let's set it to one. Right. Now let's go and try and shoot one of these. Yep, it's working. Okay, so now we're able to shoot things. Sweet! And that's kind of cool. So let's set the speed back to what it was. And then the other thing that would be really nice to do is have a shadow on the ground. Um, just... And for now, let's... Oh, how's the hackiest way we could do this? Um, uh, I mean, we could take a sphere and flatten it, but that means having a, no, a non-uniform scale we're passing up. We've already got a scale factor in there, and I don't want to mess with that anymore. Um, oh, and Paran is sending some stuff. And Paran... Please make the sound. Oh, that, oh wait. There's 256 list alien. Cool. Um, I mean, we could, we could be shooting aliens at him. Um, oh, what was that? Oh, it was alien PNG. Yep. Sample this. Shooting aliens, it does look a little bad though. Well, I was making that square before you asked for the green texture, so I didn't know that was going to. Oh, dude, it's not a problem, it's really funny to me. Da, 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 da. Right, we need more um, balls because it's just almost a challenge right now, and that's annoying. Okay, um. Do push this onto things. There we go. Tons of them. 160 odd things now. We can just blast away. And even as bad as things as I am, I should be able to hit some of these guys. Or not. Maybe I'm the world's best dodger of all things. Oh, man. This is why I don't make games, because I'm terrible at playing them. What I need to do is put a shadow on the floor. <laughs> I love the sound effect. Da, 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 da. Um, did you send it? Did you send the sound effect? Did someone send the sound effect? Didn't they? Mike is confused. Ooh, that's cool. Yes, that please. Actually, let's just this like we won't be able to tell how messed up this one is. Green. Not JPEG. Hmm. Will the JPEGs work? Probably. Let's see. I don't know how Dirt's going to handle that. Green. Ugh, didn't like that at all. Wow, and everything went mental. Um, let's just load up GIMP quickly. And we'll fix this. We've still got time. We've still got time. We go on for another 15 minutes, I think. Uh, where are we? Uh, code. And Lisp. And Pogovets. And green. Open. And let's just crop ourselves a... Really? That'll do. And then 
export as green.png. Whatever. No. And then green.jpg can be deleted and we can do green.png. That is not square. Anyway, doesn't matter. There we go. Ba -ba 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 -bang. We do need to add sound effects. I can't be doing this every week. How am I hitting none of them? It's impressive. Okay, so that is that is probably where we get to tonight. Um, I love pizza theme shoes. <laughs> That's what we're making now. Next week, we're going to carry on making our pizza theme shooter. This is going to be a nice big sphere. You're going to find me a pizza texture, and then we're going to have... Yeah, like, all the, the falling things can be olives. That's totally it. We can make them olives. And then, uh, oh yeah, I, I'm having anchovies on the pizza. That sounds great. But, uh, but uh, I love olives, though. What don't I like? What food don't I like? Fucking licorice. Probably licorice falling from the sky. Ugh. And you shoot it, otherwise it ruins your pizza. Maybe we do that? We could totally make that in next time. Okay, so that that's what we're doing. And we'll look up some sound library so we can put some sound effects in. So what would be good for you guys to do is find textures, preferably ones we can use afterwards. Because I want to be able to share this code with you, all the resources and stuff, the assets. And we can't do that if they're stolen textures. So look for... Look for that kind of stuff. Basically, if you're down for this, I'm telling you what to do. Yeah, go find me things. If you're down, please find some resources and we'll uh, we'll put it together next week. I love the idea of pizza theme shooter. That's so crazy. Cool. Right, this is the best place possible to leave this. So I hope you've all enjoyed this. I've had a blast. Um, yeah, I'll catch you next week. And uh, this was good. See you folks later.